Are you looking for a stress-free summer? HelloFresh sends you foolproof step-by-step recipes and fresh pre-portioned ingredients to make mealtimes a summer breeze. Get 16 free meals plus three free gifts with code MLM16 at hellofresh.com slash MLM16. Welcome viewers to the main event. Today's bout is sure to go down in crypto history. Fighting out of the red corner is a man who needs no introduction. Known all over the world, he displays some of the greatest boxing skills our sport has ever seen. Wearing green trunks with gold trim based out of Las Vegas, Nevada, he weighed in at 155 pounds. A veteran of 25 world title bouts, he is undefeated in his 25 and a half year campaign. With a record of 52 wins, zero losses, with 27 wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, he is pound for pound, great, boxing's future Hall of Famer, the sensational, 12-time world champion in five separate weight divisions. Please welcome the former WBC and WBA welterweight and lightweight champion of the world, Floyd Money Mayweather! And in the blue corner is a pyramid against pyramid schemes that's taken the world by storm the past few years. With well-researched accuracy and a flurry of shots that always land, this may be Floyd's toughest bout yet. Wearing her signature purple sweatshirt with green leggings based out of none of your business, she weighed in at readily 100 pixels. A veteran of multi-level Mondays, she's undefeated with a record of 111 wins, zero losses, with countless wins coming by way of knockout. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the ring the pointed analysis of shady business practices, a voice heard all around the world. Pyramid versus champion fighter, let's go! Today, I'm stepping in the ring with the pretty boy. We're going six rounds, and I'm going to break that shell and hand him his first loss. Floyd Mayweather Jr. has competed as a boxer in the national spotlight since 1996. Considered one of the most proficient masters of the Philly shell boxing style, a method that protects the torso with the front arm and guards the face with the rear hand. This lightweight division boxer is known as one of the best boxers of all time, but is he actually the best? Regardless of that, there is no debate that he's become one of the most accomplished athletes of this generation. With an amazing professional record of 50 to zero, he used inverted defensive boxing to wear out opponents and make them miss punches or those punches get absorbed. The opponents he beat includes a list of legendary boxers like Jose Luis Castilla, Oscar De La Hoya, and Manny Pacquiao, though many still debate whether Floyd actually won that one. Even more interesting than Mayweather's boxing career was his marketing strategy. Now, I don't know if it's scripted or factual, but he made a career out of being a villain. He's boisterous, antagonistic, and hostile in a way that was different from other famous fighters. There were people who bragged about being the greatest, like Muhammad Ali. And I mean, even back in his prime, people took his banter as lighthearted. Some people like Mike Tyson, well, he just kind of scares everyone. You either make sure not to piss him off or you stay out of his way. For instance, maybe don't harass someone while they're just trying to take a peaceful flight, but I digress. Floyd was truly the persona of a jerk. He got into altercations with his father, argued with spokespeople in the ring, called out many of the boxing legends he beat, hurling insults at them. He even laid what some consider a cheap shot in the ring. Before you come after me, I know it was legal and in response to an illegal headbutt, but there is no tongue in cheek comments. Looking at the way he composed himself left fans rooting against him. It went right along with his motto, love me or hate me, you're gonna watch me. Whenever Floyd played the villain role, he made sure a camera was on him. He meticulously earned the heel status in the story. 
And for those who don't know, heel is a term given to the bad guy in a story. The persona is a marketing decision designed to make Floyd look bad in the best of ways. Money Mayweather even played the role in heel in World Wrestling Entertainment, who historically have celebrated their heels. Or there is the possibility that he embodied the type of character that would attack the mothers of his children on multiple occasions, punching and kicking them. There is the possibility that he's a horribly violent person who has scarred women and children on numerous occasions. You might be able to dodge punches, but you can't dodge the truth. This attitude, whether we liked it or not, sold a lot of tickets, which means he made a lot of money. He regularly makes tens of millions or reportedly hundreds of millions of dollars to step in the ring, and he has for years. I say that in present tense because despite retiring in 2017, he has participated in a number of exhibition bouts. In May, he had an eight round fight against Don Moore. Last year, he fought YouTube personality, Logan Paul. I went to length about his boxing career and criminal past because Mayweather's marketing built the foundation of the NFTs he created and endorsed. After he kinda sorta retired, he joined the crypto craze that swept through social media for the past five years. So with one hell of an intro, hello and welcome to Multilevel Mondays. I'm the Illuminati, and not long ago, we did an extensive analysis of cryptocurrency and non-fungible tokens. At the time, the value had skyrocketed and many were getting rich off of investing in crypto. In a matter of months, the crypto market completely tanked and both the coins and the NFTs suffered staggering losses. Not even the Bored Ape Yacht Club was immune to it. That went double for Money Mayweather, except there's not much money in this one. At the beginning of the year, Floyd Mayweather and Kim Kardashian were served a class action lawsuit for allegedly inflating the price of Ethereum Max before, you guessed it, pulling the rug and killing the value of it. Mayweather endorsed the token in his boxing match with YouTube star Logan Paul on June 6, 2021. Ethereum Max was accepted as payment for tickets to the event, a move the lawsuit claims boosted trading volume sharply. And as a side note, getting involved with Kim Kardashian and crypto does not give me a warm fuzzy feeling, just saying. In the following six months, Ethereum Max tanked, losing 97% of value. Considering the currency was available as a payment method, that shouldn't have happened. I didn't find how much crypto contributed to the sales, but this is Money Mayweather we're talking about. In promotional venues, Floyd claimed to have made $100 million for quote, a light sparring match with Logan Paul, but that's only a part of the story. Looking at the coin's history, Ethereum Max's value completely tanked on June 11th, 2021, not even a week after the fight that made another fortune. So one of two things had to happen here. Either the sales method completely failed and holders reacted, killing the value of the coin, or the more likely scenario, whatever money was in it was abruptly rugged. As soon as the fight was done, the promotion stopped. But this isn't the only issue with that fight either. A year following the exhibition match, Logan Paul is reported not receiving the amount he was promised for participating in the fight. And Floyd, as the marketing arm, claimed that payouts can take a long time and essentially Logan's just being impatient. But that isn't good enough. How many of you are willing to work a job and not receive your total pay until a year later? I know I wouldn't. Do any other professional athletes just kind of accept that? Is that a thing? I don't know. But even when you talk about other individual sports like MMA, you don't hear about this type of delay in earnings. And even if it were, Floyd is in control of how the ticket sales revenue would go. So it does appear that not only did he cheat the people using the promoted crypto, but he also hasn't fulfilled his contract with the very person he fought. It's not like I'm a fan of the Paul brothers, but they are right in the simplest of ways here. And a contract's pretty simple. We agree to terms, you fulfill your part, you get paid. I mean, it's pretty damn simple. So if Floyd can't manage to pay his opponent in a timely manner, is it any wonder that the coin bombed in value? The bout never announced an actual winner, but the losers were the people who invested in Ethereum Max on Floyd's behalf and found out the hard way that the money they invested all went down the drain, or more accurately, into the boxer's pockets. Well, that was quite an exciting round. Illuminati has continued putting pressure on Money Mayweather. She started by opening up Floyd's questionable character and providing evidence that he hasn't been trustworthy before chipping away at his defenses. He'll be looking to come up the pyramid again with other NFTs, but if she's light on her feet and takes them one by one, I think she'll find victory. All right, the break is over. It's time for round three. The fight scam wasn't the only shit that Floyd pulled last year. 
In December, he promoted Bored Bunny NFTs. And I know what you're thinking, they aren't the same as Bored Apes. Do you really think that someone would deliberately copy an IP for a quick cash grab? Perish the thought. Don't even pay attention to the one wearing a shirt that says, not a Bored Ape. Now, someone named Zach XBT is pretty much Twitter's equivalent to CoffeeZilla on YouTube. He does investigative research on financial frauds and NFTs. He breaks down what happened to Bored Bunnies the first time Floyd touted them. Zach goes step-by-step step for how Bored Bunnies was slowly rugged. Then Floyd started endorsing a similarly sounding token, Bored Bad Bunnies. Like seriously, it's supposedly a different NFT. And again, it was rugged before Mutant Bad Bunnies showed up. The money would be there and then all of a sudden, voila, it was gone. As people began asking questions on their Discord, the admins predictably were nowhere to be found. Not lost in this time period is Floyd's arrival at a Bitcoin convention. He wore an Ethereum Max shirt, sat in front of a large crowd and suggested they don't need to depend on Bitcoin. That whole, there are a number of cryptos out there that could potentially surpass Bitcoin. The most important part of crypto, according to money, is the fact that an individual believes in themselves. Floyd was booed off stage by Bitcoin supporters, FYI. Now, don't get me wrong. I can vibe with the idea that people can work hard and try and get what they're looking for. It's not necessarily the American dream concept that gets fed to us, but there is still merit for working to achieve your goals. That just didn't resonate with the people in attendance. I'm getting a serious case of deja vu here. We haven't talked about someone who habitually scammed people and ghosted them on their platforms. Oh, wait, I know. Maybe we can get Floyd Mayweather and Ice Poseidon in a boxing match together. That will go great, but no NFTs, please. Let them raise money for a children's charity or something instead. That would be much better for everybody involved. We see so many of these NFTs that it's sometimes hard to remember that people are being impacted by celebrities marketing them. They're influencers, images of success, and largely the product of parasocial relationships. Some are going all in just to have their lives ruined because someone wants to make money in an unethical way. And if you've talked to someone who's fallen for these, they often feel humiliation and despair. I bring these things to light because I don't want you, me, or anyone else to be scammed. There's something about this whole ordeal that just doesn't make sense to me. Floyd has all this money. He constantly talks about how rich he is and how that makes him so great. So why would he even care that much about crypto? I mean, for crying out loud, the word money is part of his moniker. But for whatever reason, unknown to me, He continues, and so of course, he eventually had to plaster his face on other projects. Just last year, Floyd founded his own NFT called Floyd NFT or Floyd's World NFT. It's a colorful display of narcissism as you can choose from a choice of 11,111 options, all featuring the former boxer with different expressions. The images are often surrounded by boxing imagery, a self-absorbed display of just how much money he has, trading imagery or jet setting. If you didn't get the hint, he's number one. It's for the lulls, of course. Even the promotional material features Floyd in his pool talking about how great he is and having the NFT is a great piece of his legacy. And that's something I don't get. You can get the mouthy, cocky antagonist for free, Why would you pay money when he gives his self-congratulating demeanor pro bono? The token launched in early August, 2021, peaked in mid-September and dropped to nearly zero the day after. All the promises made by Floyd, the signed gloves, the signed photos, the replica belt, party invites, all memorable experiences for his fans. He didn't follow through on any of those. Fans took to the community discord to call him out on the gloves and there was no confirmation on if he followed through on the tickets a winner was supposed to receive for Floyd's most recent fight. Honestly, if you were a fan of Mayweather as the boxer, these would have been some great value souvenirs. The signed boxing gloves commemorating 50 straight wins is actually something I could get behind. I think it's something that his fans would actually find valuable, memorable, and important. But the reality here is that none of it matters. He ultimately made promises that he didn't keep. He danced around the discord, much like he did in the ring, constantly keeping his guard up, looking for his fans to lower their guard before he hit their pockets with the right hook. They stumbled, not realizing he yet again took them for their money. Whether you pay to see me win or lose, I'm the smart one because you're paying, which is kind of exactly what he's doing here. The only goal is to make the consumers, his fans, pay. Now, this year in 2022, Floyd gave his first NFT a knockout by introducing Maywaverse or however the Mayweatherverse, Mayweather, I don't know how the hell you say it. The production team for real Floyd NFT were unaware of Floyd's betrayal. 
And honestly, I don't know why they're so surprised. If they paid attention to the morals of Mayweather, they'd see a man who willingly embraced the heel and citing his domestic violence issues was often as awful as he seemed. The Discord moderators tried to reassure the community, but the reality was that the NFT was not coming back. Floyd actively promoted the project prior to the drop, including numerous social media posts and some videos. And he used one of our project PFPs as his Twitter avatar from the time of the drop in August until yesterday, March 21st, 2022. His team provided the community exclusive invites to his birthday, which were unlockables for holders of the birthday NFTs. What's crazy is Floyd probably didn't need to do all that much to keep this NFT going. Much of what I read regarding tokens is about keeping them relevant. At the very least, constant updates and promotions push the narrative that it is a living currency. Hell, he could even continue being self-absorbed in the videos. I don't give a shit about that. With someone who built his career off of talent and hype, you'd think that something like this, maintaining an NFT would be easy. We can't confirm or deny accusations that Floyd ducked fights, but I would suggest that he ducked his fan base and all those who believed in Floyd's world NFTs. He didn't want to get in the ring with those who gave him money. There's always the chance that he's just naive to the way crypto works, I suppose. This digital landscape isn't common knowledge yet, so I, certainly that's an excuse we can try and use here. Maybe he didn't know. But it doesn't take tech savvy to break promises and rip people off. You can do that without knowing a goddamn thing. And personally, my opinion, that's where I think his morals lie. What a match it's been so far, viewers. Floyd Money Mayweather typically shows extreme quickness and that impenetrable shell defense, but it's having no effect on Illuminati. Her film study and conditioning have paid off. And in these four rounds, she's again chipped away at the Hall of Fame boxer. If you look at the replay, the body shots are piling up. You can see pain on Floyd's face as chunks of his crypto empire crumble. Why stop? The Illuminati can go 10 more rounds with this clown. What's the rest of the match look like, you may ask? She'll continue methodically hitting Floyd with evidence. Just goes to show that you can't outpunch the truth. As we prepare for a media break, let's take a moment to recognize our sponsors. Now, when you run a business, time is ever so precious. Every misplaced moment feels like a missed opportunity, a lost chance to make your business better, or even just step away and recharge. ShipStation automates time-intensive shipping processes so you can get back to focusing on bigger things, like developing new products, honing your marketing strategy, or interacting with customers. ShipStation is amazing to help save time and save money. They take a look at all the shippers out there and compare prices so that you can get the optimum price for what you're sending. And not only that, but it's gonna work across all your storefronts. So if you're selling on Amazon, eBay, Etsy, wherever, it's going to let you automate all the manual work that goes into shipping, which means you get to spend more time working on what you love. And for me, obviously, the thought comes up with candles. I like the opportunity to be able to sit down and try and formulate new scents, new candles, new ideas. And I wouldn't have nearly as much time if I had to sit there and manually go through every single time with shipping when someone placed an order. That would be insane. And ShipStation holds all of that down for me so that I can spend more time being creative, which is amazing. And ShipStation is really, really good, but you don't have to just take my word for it. 98% of companies that use ShipStation for a year keep using it as long as they're in business. And I think that really says something. So it's time to let go of all those shipping tasks. ShipStation can do it better and faster. Sign up using promo code MLM for a free 60-day trial today at ShipStation.com and start saving with every shipment. That's two whole months of shipping made quick and painless, and it's free to try. Again, just go to ShipStation.com, click on the microphone at the top of the page, and type in MLM. ShipStation, make ship happen. So here's another question for you. Were you one of the millions who tried making bread a couple years ago? Or maybe the thought of growing your own sourdough starter was, well, a non-starter for you? Well, it doesn't matter which one you are. We can all agree there's nothing quite like hot, delicious, fresh baked bread. So what if I told you you could get all the flavor with none of the time and work involved? Well, it turns out you can with Wild Grain. Wild Grain is the first bake from frozen box for artisanal bread. Plus they have amazing rolls, pastries, and even handmade pastas. And at this point, I have baked at least two of their sourdough loaves that they've sent me. And I have got to tell you, it is the most painless experience ever. 
And for the record, I live in Colorado, right? So high elevation. So when you're cooking and baking, you usually have to change the temperature or the amount of time something's left in the oven or on the stove or you know any of those varieties of things. So even in high elevation, when I've been cooking their breads, trying their rolls, trying their biscuits, trying their pastas, I've been able to adjust it really well in high altitude and it comes out amazing. I even had like a little cheese night where I invited some friends over to have some like cheese and wine and I baked a loaf of wild grain bread and they thought I baked it from scratch. I fooled them suckers, but now they're gonna hear this and go, Blair, you were lying to us. And I go, yeah, kind of, but I don't care. It tasted really good. Plus for every new member, Wild Grain donates six meals to the Greater Boston Food Bank and they've donated over 120,000 meals so far. And I think it's fantastic that they also give back to their community. And to sign up, you just, you know, put in your information, choose what type of box you wanna receive and how often, and then they deliver it all to you. So is all of this making you excited and hungry? Good, because for a limited time, you can get $30 off your first box, plus free croissants in every box when you go to wildgrain.com slash MLM to start your subscription. And you guys heard me, I said free croissants in every box and $30 off your first box when you go to wildgrain.com slash MLM. That's wildgrain.com slash MLM, or you can use promo code MLM at checkout. Okay, it looks like round five is ready to begin. Let's get back to it. The dollar signs first aligned in 2018 when Mr. Money Pants and DJ Khaled began promoting Centratech, a company that supposedly sold financial products related to crypto, owned by Robert Farkas, Raymond Tapani, and Sorab Sharma. The company raised funds using ICO or initial coin offerings. To keep it simple, it's pretty similar to crowdfunding. The problem was that, you know, they broke the law. Farkas and his co-conspirators created fictitious executives and fabricated business relationships with legitimate institutions to dupe investors into handing over millions of dollars for a fraudulent ICO, said INT Graff, chief counsel to the acting US attorney. In 2020, Farkas was sentenced to one year in jail and three years of probation. He also had to forfeit over $340,000. Sharma faced an even stiffer punishment, being sentenced to eight years in jail. Centratech reportedly frauded customers out of $32 million. That's a lot of money. It wouldn't shock me if Farkas threw Sharma under the boat for a lighter sentence either. I couldn't confirm whether the investors got their money back, but the United States Marshals Service reportedly recouped $33 million. But what exactly does this have to do with Floyd Mayweather? Well, a little detail glossed over in the reports was the fact that Floyd was paid $100,000 to promote this Centratech. He went from, I didn't know they scammed others to being directly involved and benefiting from the scam itself. Floyd was fined well over $600,000 to settle charges he didn't disclose those payments for promotion. Part of the agreement mandated Floyd not to promote any securities, digital or otherwise, for three years. And you know, I can understand the first one. Maybe Floyd was happy to take the money and promote something he really believed in. Maybe Centratech really sold him on their business plan, him being a savvy businessman himself, allegedly. We've all invested in something that turned out to be not true, whether that be monetarily or with time or resources. Everyone makes mistakes. What's unmistakable is the fact that he immediately returned to the crypto scene after his ban and rugged his followers with Floyd's world. Ian Fleming said, once is happenstance, twice is coincidence, three times is enemy action. When Floyd repeatedly targets his fans with these ridiculous and insidious crypto schemes, it destroys the idea that he's an innocent bystander when it came to the 2018 Centra scandal. Oh, and remember Logan Paul? Well, he isn't the only one taking legal action against Mayweather regarding their fight. According to Boxing Talk, Floyd, his promotion company, and Al Heyman joined defendants being sued for nearly $6 million over the exhibition bout. Joseph Englandoft, considered a good friend of Mayweather, was solicited by the boxer to invest in the tickets for last year's match. The lawsuit reveals a marketing strategy in boxing that is just shitty, in my opinion. Essentially, the promotional company, whether it be Mayweather's team or this Englandoff, buys a number of tickets at the listed sale price. Then they work as inside scalpers, drastically raising the price of resold tickets in order to make an even bigger profit. Now, I'm obviously not too familiar with the boxing industry, but that being said, I can't say anything good about this practice. Most of the time when I see scalping with sporting tickets, they prey on those who are desperate to get into the game. $80 tickets suddenly cost 350, like you get the idea. After the match was done and a number of unsuspecting boxing fans were scalped, Mr. Englinoff looked to receive payment a week after the fight. After he made demands, the Mayweather team told him that the money had been reinvested into another fight. They made a number of excuses, changing the terms and allegedly only paid 100,000 of the promised 5 million. Allegedly, the plaintiff claims to have gotten an email promising him $4.8 million plus the profits from the reinvestment, amounting to 5.7 million. 
he received another 100,000 and more lip service before complaining again. He was told his money was being reinvested again. If Inglinoff hadn't decided to serve them papers, I think it's unreasonable to suggest that he would have been nickel and dime for years. All the while Mayweather continued profiting from the money that wasn't his. So instead of paying off the person you talked into scalping tickets, you blow off that person, only give him 2% of his pay at the time and continue using his money to bankroll your operations. That's not very cash money of you, Mr. Floyd. Maybe instead of calling him Money Mayweather, you should call him Ponzi Mayweather. Now, of course, the boxing controversies surrounding him have little to do with the NFTs, except to underscore exactly what level of integrity you're looking at in Floyd. Something I just don't understand is the why factor here. Why would this man who has built an incredible career as a boxer and media figure stoop to shilling crypto and NFTs and scams? For one, the guy is stupid rich. This is the man who allegedly owns 100 cars and can buy Ferraris and sell them weeks later. As an interesting side note, he's actually allegedly banned from buying another Ferrari for this very reason. Honestly, what use does Floyd have getting even more money, let alone trying to get into NFTs and then on top of it, scamming someone? Like I. I do wanna get inside his head and understand why do you feel the need to tarnish your reputation and scam your fans and hurt the people who lift you up? I I am at a loss here. When you are literally the highest paid boxer of all time, there's not much you can't buy, nowhere you really can't go and nothing legal you can't do, though I'm sure there's even illegal things you can probably get away with too. If he needs extra money, he could always make those celebrity appearances like he has done. I have a decent understanding of crypto, but I don't have the full confidence in it that others have. He constantly talks about his consumers having a piece of his legacy, but all this poor media is going to kill that. The wild thing about the internet is you can be immortalized over centuries and then discarded in a week, all about at the same time. His reputation as a scam artist could potentially overshadow his athletic accomplishments. In turn, tarnishing his legacy would kill the value of the mints he's so desperately trying to rug. He's not even fighting a worthwhile battle at this point, so it just doesn't make sense. The newest line of Mayweather scams is the Mayweathers. And I wish I was kidding with that name, but yeah, that's that's the real name. After three years of being banned from promoting crypto, he's back promoting a new NFT. And wouldn't you know it, people finally seem to be waking up to his nonsense. Unlike the Floyd world, which netted somewhere around $5 million, this new NFT featuring images that look more like action figures made about $200,000. Now, while that's a lot of money to me and probably you, for Floyd, that's pennies and obviously a failure. But even that didn't stop him from taking the money. And reportedly the money's already gone and the team has already stopped working on the Mayweaverse again. At least this time, they responded to the Twitter account outing them. Sadly for Floyd, I don't think a request to stop is going to keep Floyd from getting exposed. Zach XBT provides a detailed flowchart of how most of the scams and rug pulls led back to a single Binance wallet, presumably owned by Mayweather. Along with the rug, there were a bunch of the same promises made to investors, the same signed gloves, the same promises of events only to never be fulfilled. He may be a warrior in the ring, but when it comes to the NFT world, he's only all talk. There was and is never anything of substance here. And unfortunately, if you buy any of the crypto assets Floyd promotes, you'll be buying digital garbage. Unfortunately, none of this points to the boxer thinking well of the people who support him. He thinks that you're stupid and the money is better in his hands than yours. He'll kindly thank you on camera and laugh when the video's over. Floyd, money, Mayweather. Well, you know the rest. Well, with all of that being said, that is where I'm gonna wrap up today's episode of Multilevel Mondays. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, make sure you're liking, following, and subscribing so you can stay up to date on all the latest episodes. I'd also like to thank Mr. Robin Nelson of Zykron for voicing the lovely announcer in today's episode. Thank you so much for stepping in and being able to be a a fun little announcer. I hope you had as much fun with it as I did. And I hope you all enjoyed hearing a new voice on the channel as well. As always, I appreciate your time and I'm not gonna take up any more of it. So y'all all have a great day out there and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.